Hi guys, life for Gary Lineker must be extremely difficult because when he tweets or speaks about a topic, he gets attacked from right-wing media, Tory MPs, and even government ministers. Whatever the topic, Gary will be criticised. He's told to shut up about politics and stick to sport. And there have been attempts to have him fired from his position over comments he's made either in the media or on Twitter. So with that in mind, what do you think Jacob Rees-Mogg is angry with Gary Lineker over? Well, not making a comment, if you can actually believe it. Have a listen. It's really interesting, isn't it? Because you don't expect people to tweet on everything. It's not compulsory to put your view on every subject. But there are some notable celebrities and organisations who put their views out on everything who are resoundingly silent. Well, yes. Uh, I mean, Gary Lineker, for example, if I can pick on him, uh, he uh, drew a lot of publicity when he compared the government's immigration policy to 1930s Germany. Well, what happened in Israel on Saturday was 1940s Germany. More Jews were killed on Saturday, deliberately, than on any day since the Holocaust. As far as I know, the only thing Gary Lineker has so far tweeted about is to applaud the BBC's stance uh, in not calling Hamas terrorists. Which is absolutely extraordinary from somebody who normally fills the airway with his view on anything and everything. Well, I'm sure he's been extremely busy on other things and he hasn't managed to get round to condemning unambiguously a terrorist atrocity. <laughs> These people are ridiculous. Okay, so why has Gary Lineker not commented on this even though Gary Lineker doesn't comment on everything? Jacob Rees-Mogg trying to suggest that he comments on everything. He fills the airwaves with his comments. He doesn't actually do that. He chooses things to comment on and he comments on those things. Now, what good could come from Gary Lineker condemning this? Because Gary Lineker has a huge following generally in Britain and he uses that platform to influence things that he believes he can influence in Britain. So if Gary Lineker came out and condemned Hamas or whatever, would Hamas suddenly sit up and go, oh my God, Gary Lineker is criticizing us, we better stop what we're doing. But when Gary Lineker uses his platform to influence or try and push change in Britain, not internationally, or if he has influence internationally, he'll do that. But Gary Lineker's influence in the Middle East is somewhat limited. So I believe that's why he's not commenting on it, because like, what's the point in me commenting? What can I add to the discussion? What's the point in me commenting on something that's going to have zero impact? When he calls out the, the Tories and their policies in, in Britain, he has some influence. People sit up and listen. They either agree with him or disagree with him, but they sit up and listen. This is a massive amount of influence. I would love to have half the influence, a tenth of the influence that Gary Lineker has. So when he speaks, people listen, whether they agree or not. But people in the Middle East are not listening to Gary Lineker, so what's the point in him tweeting about it? It would have zero impact, even if he was supporting Israel or supporting the Palestinians. It wouldn't make any difference. But these people are angry that he's not tweeting about this. <laughs> like you, how can you be criticizing him for tweeting all the time, which he doesn't, and then turn around and say, well, why isn't he tweeting about this? We want Gary Lineker to start tweeting again. Unhinged. Unhinged beyond belief. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.